Good morning and welcome to Warner Park for the start of the T20 Blaze. We have the third umpire, the two captains and the match referee. Match referee, we're ready for the toss. Toss is with Edwards of the Leewards. Heads. Heads is a call. Tails, Tails it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so the winning streak continues for Edwards. You have won the toss. All right, what are so you going to do? Leewa is going to have a bat this morning. It's a pretty solid pitch. So I believe we can capitalize on that and put some runs on the board and later on in the day, defend that. And what about your team? My team is in good spirit this morning. They like the T20 matches, quick matches. So I believe we're in it this morning. And who are the players out? We have two changes this morning. We have Tynetta out. She was in last game. That's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning again, Captain. Good morning. She won the toss again. She has won all of the tosses. <laughs> yeah. If you had won the toss, what would you have done? We have had a bat as well. You'd have had a bat. Uh, overcast conditions, can't complain about that. So let's hope that bowlers can come up here and utilize these conditions and we up. And your team for today? Uh, Asabi O and Garden O. Um, Talia gets her first game on the tour. And uh, one more team she can't remember. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much and good luck. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's it from the toss where the Leewards have won the toss. Amanda Edwards has won all of the tosses so far. Uh, she has won the toss but lost the games. Let's see if today will make a difference. Good morning and welcome to the start of the T20 Blaze. It's the West Indies Ladies 2020 competition. And we can tell you, as you just learned from the toss, that the Leewards won the toss and decided to bat. The umpires in this game are Javid Passard and Vicky Daniel, and they're out on the field already with the Barbados side and the openers for the Leewards. Alongside me to my right is Stacey Ann Adams. Good morning and how are you doing? Good morning, Carlisle, and good morning to all the viewers out there. Thanks for having me. And uh, we have seen from the teams that the Leewards are omitting for today's game. Tineta McCoy, Sanello Willett, Melissa Clark, Shean Moses. That's one too many. <laughs> and so one of those would be playing there. Only 14 in each squad, so three of the players are out, but you have the Barbados team. Yes, so the Barbados team will read as Kaisia Knight, Alia Alin, Shanika Bruce, Z Zalia Campbell, sorry, Shamilia Connell, Nijani Komabach, Erin Dean is making her debut today, Kelia Elliott, Chrisan Howell is out, Alison Garden is also out, Trishan Hola is in, Kaishona Knight and Alyssa Scantoberry to round out the 11. And so it's the start of an exciting brand of cricket. S Warner Park in St. Kitts, of course, the home of the St. Kitts Navis Patriots. And uh, so they are accustomed to T20 cricket at Warner Park. And we it's we're hoping that the crowds will come in as well. So the Leewards are batting first. And uh, at the crease, a uh, Boyce and Bashka. Yes, so Shamilia Connell, as usual, opening the bowling for the Barbados team. Interesting that Leeward Islands, they won the toss, decided to bat today. Um, I guess it's something from the, 20, the 50 overs, they managed to put on the highest total ever in this tournament, um, 255 runs to be exact. So they're hoping to put on a big total today to give Barbados some fight. And the pitches here have played through. We've seen quite a bit of cricket. We are on the far western pitch at Warner Park. And it's Boyce getting the delivery down the leg side. And she's trying to work it away for runs. And it just comes from the pad. Good take by the keeper going down the leg side. Yes, so Connell early though, she's trying to angle that into Boyce. You know, not giving her any rooms to free her arms. So that's good thinking from her. Just starting it a bit too straight on that occasion. Two fielders out at cover on the boundary and third. Big swing from Boyce going across the line. He took the top edge and runs away over the head of the field that slipped down to straight third man for four. 
Yeah, well, unintentionally played, but um, effective in the end, picking up the first one before Barbados off the bat of Renice Boy. So, good start to Barbados, to Leeward Island, sorry. It's a T20 format, so having a go. All he does is Renice Boys. He's again looking to go across the lane, playing right around it on this occasion. Perhaps should be looking straight up. Yes, indeed so, Carl. And that's a good follow-up delivery from Connell after getting that edge there. Unfortunate for the bowler. But better delivery, not giving her any rooms to free her arms. And very important in the T20 tournament. Not to give the bowlers, the batters, any rooms to free their arms. And that one was pitched up, almost an opportunity for Shamilia Connell, who was the best bowler for the Barbados team last year in the T20 Blaze tournament. Picked up six wickets and had a great economy as well. And she's trying to guide this one down to third man, boys. Perhaps a good job that she missed it. Went straight to the through to the keeper. End of one over. Leewards are four without loss. Bashka is the other opening batter for the Leewards. And oftentimes, Stacey Ann, these batters forget the 20 overs. It's 120 balls. They say the shorter number 20 Legs and down. think that we have to go at everything. But there is usually time to Legs. get yourself in. Yes, indeed so, Carlisle. Um, so right let's see what brand of cricket Bashka is going to play. Hello? We saw her in the 50 overs. She will look to give the Leeward Islands a really good start. But as you mentioned, you know, you have, you have more time than you think. Just to, especially to see off the key bowler, which is... Um, Connell, Alia Alin, coming from the other end. And uh, this one is driven in the ear, falling short of the field at extra cover and no runs. So going hard at the first delivery, Bashka. She's one of the overseas players for the Leewards. Yes, and what I saw of her in the 50 overs is she likes the width as well. So anything marginally wide or short, she's going to go at it. And she likes to hit that pocket at the mid-wicket area. So the 50 over competition is behind us and uh, Jamaica despite losing, losing the last game they were so far out in front that they still ended up winning comfortably. Played into the offside with soft hands, the fielder from extra cover has to chase around to her left and so Bashka gets off the mark. Yes, nicely played by Bashka to get off the mark, hitting that gap there, that vacant gap at cover, extra covers on the boundary. Two fielders out for this game is third man and extra cover, as mentioned. Renice Boyce played for Trinidad and Tobago last season. And uh, she's getting a wide delivery, called and signal. Easy call for the umpire. Pitch wide and going further away. And so the first extra of the inning, it's now six for no loss. Yes, um, just going back to the Super 50, I think a fact that the viewers would like to know is last year's tournament, um, they only managed across the tournament after I'll continue after this delivery, Carlisle. Oh. Yes, in last year's tournament, the team's total altogether was just 2,965 runs scored in that 50 over tournament last year. This year, a marked improvement. There was an overall total of 4,917 runs last year. That's a huge difference, a difference of close to 2,000 runs. Significant. 
Short delivery pulled into the onside, and this one will bounce across the mid-wicket boundary for four. Yes, definitely too short there from yeah. Alia Alin, and uh, any batter will be happy to put that away. Crashed into the mid-wicket boundary for her second boundary of this match, Renee's boys. The improvement in, in runs, I would like to think it had something to do with the bonus points. Indeed, I mean, there are numerous reasons, but I think the main thing, as you mentioned, the bonus point stood out. Um, you know, you get a bonus point if you cross 200. Adding to that, there were six 200 totals in this tournament compared to last year that only had three, two of which went to Barbados. Aline wants more to finish the over. She's looking to run this one down to third man. Missed it. Went to the, to the keeper. Two of us completed. Leewards a 10 for none. And the Leewards featuring in those 200 totals for the first time ever. Getting to a score of 255. And uh, as well, having more than two batters go past 50 in an inning. And three batters, in fact, went past 50. Yes, lots of positivity coming out from that 50 over tournament in terms of the batting for the West Indies. And um, also to mention the T20 tournament as well, they also have the bonus point. 130 runs for that first bonus point and the second bonus point um, will be coming in at 150. So we certainly expect some fireworks in this T20 Blaze tournament. And the defending champions are Barbados. Connell from the Lozak Road end. And she's wafting it, this outside the off stump. The shouts go up, but she missed it. And uh, Bashka likes to flirt with the deliveries outside the off stump. Yes, everyone in the slip calling, and the keeper was interested in that in that um, delivery, but the, 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 the bowler didn't seem to think it hit anything. But that's a good line to Bashka. Not allowing her to free her arm. So that's a good start from Connell. This time she's driving. It's peeling off the edge and running down to third man for four. It was to the left of the fielder who was wide at third. And so it went bouncing across the boundary. She gave it everything, did Bashka, and picked up a boundary. Yeah, she was aiming for that mid-wicket area and got a healthy edge that peeled off to that third man area. So, I mean, in this tournament, it's T20, the batters are going to go hard. So, giving them as little wit as possible is key here. So, a boundary early in the over. Connell again. And she's defending away on the onside, won't score. Yes, much better follow-up delivery there from Connell. Here is Connell once more, down the leg side, oh. called and signaled wide, rightly so. And the score will move on to 15 for no loss. Yes, a wide delivery, but you see what she's trying to do, just try to cramp her for room there. Unfortunately, just a bit too straight and strained on the leg side. Excellent movement by the keeper, Casey Knight, and took it cleanly. She's kept wicket well in this tournament. Connell once more. Outside the off stump, and again she's flirting with it. Perhaps this is a shot that she should put in her back pocket and uh, just leave it alone. Yes, because there's also a slip in place for anything that edges there. Yeah, so as you mentioned earlier, sometimes you have more time in the T20 format. And Connell, as you mentioned, was the best bowler for Barbados last year in this format. Delivery which is played down to backward point. Knocked down, so they won't score. And that's a better option from Bashka, just opening the face and looking to guide it. Good feeling there from Kelia Elliot. Elliot. A lot of cricket around the region. Round four of the four-day male competition concluded yesterday. Here is Connell down the leg side again. This will be called and signal wide again. So she'll have to rebowl that delivery. Six runs in the over so far. A boundary and two wide deliveries. There's one thing I haven't seen from Connell Lewis, a pitched up delivery. 
you know, pitching one up straight to the stump just to see what happens from, you know, just to see how Bashka, Bashka go about playing it. Might well see a pitched up delivery coming here now. It's final delivery of the over, and she's defending away in the onside. They won't score. And so three of us completed. Leewards are 16 for no loss. Dad! Bruce will tell you that in just a minute. Delivery drifting down the leg side, and it's called and signaled wide. Yeah, signal wide, but a much fuller length from Alia Alim. I think that that's a better line from her. The shorter length, you know, allowing the batters to climb on, on top of the, the bowler so far. So I, I, I think I like that line for now to Bashka and Rini's boys who's on strike. That length rather. Short back of a length rather and defended away on the offside. So just a run from the wide in the over so far. We're in over number four. It's a T20 blaze for the ladies in the West Indies. Howell is out injured. Campbell is also out, and uh, the other player out is Gordon for Barbados. Aline bowls a short delivery, pull down backward of square, challenging run for the fielder coming around from mid wicket. But they, she gets there easily, and they'll have just a single. And so the score will move on to 18. It's nicely played there by boys, and good feeling by Kashon and Naitanga, and that boundary. Batters have looked comfortable to the shorter deliveries. Yes, indeed. That's why I've been saying, you know, full, a fuller length um, is something that the bowlers might look to, should look to bowl to these batters just to see how they react to playing. Because both of them have been looking to go across the line. Bashka is facing. She's on five and turns it into the onside. Finds a single. That looks like Connell coming across there at mid-wicket. And so the score moves on to 19. Slow delivery into the parts. Comes away for um, a run. No signal from the umpire, so it means a run from the bat. And the score will move on to 20 for no loss. We're in the fourth over. Bashka is now on strike. She's on six from 10. Boyce is on 10 from 13. And it's Ali Ali Aline. And a short delivery play down to the vacant third position. That brought up the fielder to point. And she dug it in short, did a lean. And it was very well played. Hit it down and into the boundary down the third for four runs. Yes, that was smartly played by Bashka. Just using the pace and guiding it between that vacant area. Once it passed those two fielders in the circle, it was a show boundary. 24 for no loss. Four was completed. As we see the Southeast Peninsula in the forefront. Nevis Peak in the background. 
Lots of action on Nevis today with the high school championships. All the high schools in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis participating in the championships this weekend. Thursday and Friday, the field events were at the Kim Collins Stadium in St. Kitts. And uh, yesterday, Saturday, and today, Sunday, the track events are being held at the Mondo Park in Nevis. First change. Yes, Erin Dean making her debut today. And the fielders out at mid-wicket and long on. And she's bowling to Boyce. Starts with a short delivery. And uh, she pulls it straight to the fielder at mid-wicket. Yes, Boyce would feel like she missed out on that delivery. All she needed to do was clear that fielder. This one is wide, very wide. And the called and signaled by the umpire. So the score moves on to 25 for no loss. Given some air and there was boys throwing everything at this one. Peeled off the edge, went over the head of the slip. And they have crossed for two runs. It's nice to the ball there by Dean. Unfortunately, that edge not going to hand. We've seen, this is the third time we've seen an edge that's flown over that field, uh, that oh, slip right. area. It's a good comeback from Dean after her first two deliveries. 27 for no loss, the leewards. This one is overtossed. Oh, right. And it goes down backward of square for four. It's a no ball as well. So above the level of the waist. And so that will be a five-run delivery. Boyce did well hit. to get this down to the boundary for four. Boundaries go ahead. Keep going. Score goes on to 37 for no loss. That's a good start there by the Leeward Islands. The young Erin Deed making her debut. Just probably need to settle her nerves a bit as to get into this game for Barbados. It's a free hit to Boyce. And she'll welcome this for sure. And she's swinging lustily, goes down to mid wicket, and they'll just get a single. So Boyce moves on to 17. I want with a ball with free hit. And the score to 33 for no loss. Jesus, Eight runs in the over so far, three deliveries to go. Dean, given her Barbados cap, an impressive little ceremony at the start of the game. Yes, our co-commentator Shakira Selman was there to present the cap to Young Dean. No, no, she goes no, back. No. Does Bashka no, plays no, it no, down no. to the field at the air at well, point? Well, and they won't score. Nils, get down after. Get down. I'll see you over. Shot and played into the offside. Straight to the fielder. Again, no runs. End of the first over by Dean. Eight runs. Leewards a 33 for no loss. Five overs completed. center end and that's Shanika Bruce who is coming into the attack. Leewards won the toss and batted 33 for no loss. Five overs completed. Boyce is on 17 and she's taking strike. And she's going into a wicket trying to turn this into the onside. And the shouts go up but the arms of the umpire go up as well. And so that's a wide 
And the score moves on to 34 for no loss. It's interesting. Usually the keeper is up for Bruce. This time Kaishon is opting to stay back for her. Worked into the onside, down to mid-wicket for a single. And the boys will move on to 18, 35 for no loss. We're in the sixth over. This might actually be a good matchup for the Barbados team. You know, the angle that Bruce operates, she looks to swing it back into the battles. So if she can get it right, she might be some trouble here for these two openers. Full pitch delivery and she's bowled it. Playing right across the line of the delivery, Bashka, and uh, losing her leg stump. And so the first wicket goes down for the leewards. And full pitch delivery and she was playing straight across that. Right away, that fuller length, you see, giving some trouble to these two battles. Who's been looking to go across. A good start though from Bashka and Rini's boys. The first wicket coming at 35. But a really good ball in there from... Shanika Bruce was looking to angle it back into the right hand and picking up that first wicket importantly for the Barbados team. And uh, Bashka is one of the overseas professionals for the Leewards. And she is, has yet to make a mark for the Leewards. And losing a wicket, 35 for one. Shawnee Hector scored a half century against the same opposition in the, in the 50 overs. And looking to continue her form here against the Barbados team in this, in this tournament, um, Carlisle. She looked a little rushed in the last game, though. Seemed a little bit impatient. And uh, the Leewards found themselves in, in, a, in a bit of trouble. There is often more time than the batters think that they have. Bruce. And she's playing in the air. Goes down to the fielder coming off the long on boundary. She goes off the mark Hector. She's on one. And Leewards 36 for one. So three runs and a wicket in the over so far. Three more balls remaining in the power play. The two fielders out. See a mid wicket. Just bringing her a bit squarer. And fine leg. Two fielders out. Wide delivery. And she'll have to reball that one. It's 30, 37 for one. Again short, pulled down to the mid-wicket boundary for four. Just a little bit too short. And Rennie's voice was quickly onto that. And it brings up a boundary to take her on to 22. She played it well. Stayed low and found the vacant mid-wicket boundary. Yeah, her voice is punishing and anything short. Interestingly, that fielder was just adjusted to come squarer. Um, had she been in that position, it probably would have been one. She's a bit straighter now for that shot. Short delivery again, played down to backward square. There's a fielder on the boundary, and so they'll just get a single to take the score on to 42 for one. Hector is on strike. Last delivery in the power play. And it's on the legs, trying to play to win to the onside. She misses those Hector. And so we have completed the first six overs of this game. That uh, over nine runs on a wicket. Lee Woods a 42 for one, end of the power play. Yes, 42 for one, a fairly good power play by the Leeward Islands. And Shanika Bruce able to pick up that wicket that the Barbados team desperately would have wanted. So, fairly good power play by Leeward Islands, as mentioned. 
Dean is back for a second over. And she'll be bowling to Rennie's boys. Driven down to mid wicket. Partially fielded by the fielder. And the long on comes off the boundary to tidy up. So there's a single to boys. Takes her on to 24. Leewards are 43 for one. Dean in a second over. And Hector is driving into the offside. Cover moves around smartly to a left and they'll get a single. Nice good goal made there by Trisha and So Dean to continue to boys. end of the power play so you have four feelers out now driving firmly over the head of the fielder who was coming off the boundary and it went for six but there was a little bit of an error by the fielder on the boundary because she was coming in off of the boundary and then the ball went over her head the umpire signaled six but certainly had she stayed on the boundary she would have had something of a chance and we look at it again in the replay and yeah she certainly overran that one she came in a bit too quickly off the boundary there the trap was set that feeler was in position and campbell was making her debut just overran that takes the leeward, the leeward islands up to 50 so 50 now to the leeward islands within seven overs a change of personnel now the taller shamelia connell moves to that long on area here is dean once more and she's going back and playing it into the offside and it will run across the boundary for four more so the leewards move on to 54 and boyce moves to 34. this boy's looking to get on top of the young dean who's making her debut today a six and now a four all coming after that drop catch well not a drop catch that miss opportunity rather and here is boys swinging down to forward of square and they'll get a single so she moves to 35 from a 24 deliveries and the lee was a 55 for one 13 in the over so far from Dean. And she comes up with a final delivery. And Hector is getting a wide delivery, which he plays into the offside. There is protection on the cover boundary. And so they'll just get a single. Leewards 56 for one. Seven overs completed. And uh, you're going to hear two ladies after words from Stacey and Adams. Yes, we're back here at the Warner Park Stadium in St. Kitts. And Shanika Bruce is going to continue to Shanisha Hector. Welcome, Shakira Selman. Thanks, Stacey Ann. And welcome to you. Welcome to St. Kitts. Uh, full ball to start. And Kaisho and the night is well set for that. Just a single to Shanisha Hector. It's getting a bit too full here now, the Barbados bowlers. Better length and line to 
boys. You see Boyce is in tension. She loves that width to free her arm. So certainly the bowlers can be a bit more straighter to her. Yeah, and it's clearly the plan with the field set. 3D on the leg side for Boyce. It was a missed opportunity from Aaron Dean. So a plan almost coming to fruition unfortunately young Zelia Campbell um, a big misjudgment on her part on the boundary this one is too full and walk nicely in the gap there from Shanisha Hector so that's her first boundary yeah you were just talking about the fact that the Barbadian bowlers were getting too full this time Shanisha Hector is able to capitalize and hit it to the left of Zalia Campbell, who's waiting at deep fine. It's just missing her length on a few occasions in this over, Bruce. That's nicely played there from Hector. Just walking it into that leg side area. As of all the grounds, all the venues that they've played the 50 overs, this one has actually produced more runs, more 200 plus scores. So I expect it to be a high scoring affair. Yeah, it should be. And the encounter between these two sides, we saw more than 500 runs in that game. So we do expect it to be a very high scoring affair. Wide signal. Just getting a bit too straight, Bruce, and missing her, length, her line. Don't want to go down that <laughs> that that area because it's just a third a fine leg in the circle. So any button that will surely be a boundary. Yes, so it's the end of the over. A 64 for one after eight overs. Leeward Islands. A great start here from them. Bernice Boyce has gotten the team off to a pretty rapid start, 36 from 27 deliveries. And of course, she was given the opportunity two overs ago, uh, yeah. that missed chance by Zelia Campbell. But she hasn't changed her intent since then. So a clear plan from the Leeward yes. Island side, promoting Boyce to the top of the order. Yeah, so when she played for Trinidad and Tobago, she actually opened up batting in the T20 format most times. And it's just walked to the leg side. Shanisha Hector just looking to give Renee's boys a strike. She's on the roll so far. And she really climbed into Aaron Dean in the last over. I think 14 Wait, runs coming off that last over from Wait, Dean. Wait, and it's not really the blueprint for most teams to capitalize on that power play when only two fielders are allowed outside the circle. So good move from the Leeward Island side. Walk down to that long arm area, but good faith shown in young Erin Dean from Kai Sia Knight after her first Hi, over. Erica, I think Erica. she came back pretty well in the second over, although it yeah, appeared that if she went for a lot, she did go for a lot of runs, but that six was Erica. unfortunate from her part. But her lengths were, were, um, were better in the second over, and she's continuing so in this third over. Looking to play across the line, a loud appeal, but Seem to be heading down leg. Yeah, another one of the reasons that Kaysia would have decided to continue with Erin Dean is because she created the opportunity. So even though it went for six runs, the opportunity was created, and that's what Barbados needs. Oh, this is beautifully done by Shanisha Hector. She's a type of player that looks to bash it down the ground, but nice to see her playing that delicate little paddle sweep to pick up a four for her team. Yeah, she tried to sweep the ball before, missed it, and there was a appeal for LBW. This time, she gets outside the line, and she's able to sweep that very fine to the right of the fielder at the Bower Square. Looking to use her feet on that occasion, but good thinking there from the bowler, just slowing it up and bowling it a bit wider. 
and Henrik Hector was able to get back in time. Yeah, she also adjusted her length very well there, Erin D. Looking for a quick single, I don't think that's on the cards there between these two. A good field in there, went straight to that fielder. So nine overs down, 70 for one. Shabani Basker, the only batter dismissed so far. She was bowled by Shanika Bruce for 10 runs in six over. No, we were talking about the amount of runs that was scored in the 50 overs. Um, you played in that tournament last year. I think the, the scores were very below, very much below par. And mention to Carla, I'll continue after this over. It's helped nicely by boys continuing in her good form to pick up another boundary uh, at Warner Park St. Kitts. She's looking good today. She's up, she's up for this competition. Well, she is coming off of 40 in her last game against the train to be able to say that this very grown. So she is in a bit of form and she's very confident. But what she's also doing well is reading the play and manipulating the field. There is a clear plan from Bruce to bowl straight to target the paths of Boyce. And she gets outside the lane of the ball. She's able to help that one to the right of the field out flying leg. This one is a huge appeal. Still appealing. Looks to be going down the leg. Umpire says not out. What do you think of that, Shakira? Yeah, perhaps it was creeping down leg. I think it would have missed, like clipped it at best. So good decision by the umpire. Yeah, but certainly this is the line that they need to be bowling to these two batters. And that length as well. Let's get them to play, come on that front foot. Um, just been a bit too inconsistent so far, the Barbados bowlers. And after the four was struck two balls ago, it prompted a change in field. So the field that long off came into mid off. The field that short flying was sent back on the boundary. Oh, this is a big one there. The first six of the match to Rini's boys. The second six, sorry, of the match. Again, to Rini's boys. I totally forgot that one there. That was a missed opportunity. But really good batting here from boys. Yeah, she is a very powerful striker of the ball, Rini's boys. And when she does time the ball well, she's able to clear the field quite easily. She takes on the fielders at long on a deep may wicket. It's a very good shot. Her second maximum, boys, and she's on to 47 off just 31 deliveries. That's, uh, that's good of Aliyah Alim, a senior player. He's having a word with Bruce. He's getting her to settle down and remember the plans. Four on that on side. Tells you a lot of the hitting areas of Rini's boys. Goes across the line again. This time, definitely going down leg. Fainted appeal there by Shanika Bruce. But the field set the way it is. She's still able to take it on and be successful. Shakira, four fielders on that onside boundary waiting. Yeah, I did mention that she's a very powerful striker. And that, that delivery sent down before that was hit for six was pretty much in the slot as well. So even though it was the right line, she's still earning in length slightly, Shanika Bruce. Oh, this one is aerial, but this one is far. Another six. And that brings up a magnificent half century from Rini's boys displaying all her hitting class here today. And you can see just how much it means to her, boys. It's a third six for her, but she is very happy with the display that she's put on so far. And you can hear her teammates in the stands supporting her. It does mean a lot. She got to 48 against Trinidad and Tobago. But the way that she'd been dismissed so far in the tournament has been very disappointing. So congrats to boys. And Libra Islands will be hoping that she can carry on. Indeed so. And a much needed refreshment for these two teams. After the 10 overs, after 10 overs, the Leeward Islands, they are 86 for one.
Yes, and welcome back to the CWI T20 Blaze, Barbados versus Leeward Islands. In this first match, rem just a reminder, we have three matches on today. After this one, the next game at 2.30, Trinidad and Tobago take on Guyana. And at 7 o'clock, Jamaica versus Windward Islands. So we're back here after the water break, and the key bowler, Shamilia Connell, is back into the attack to Shanisha Hector. This one is fuller. And that's what we've been talking about <laughs> off air, Shakira Selman. Shamilia Connell bowled in a fuller length to these bowlers, and right away, a finger goes up, and Shanisha Hector has been dismissed right after the water break. It usually happens like that, too. <laughs> yeah, it's always a time where either the fielding team or the behind team is called napping. A good move by Kaisi and Knight to get her key bowler back into the attack, noticing that this is a key partnership, and she needed to break it. Initially, it seemed to be a very optimistic appeal. In fact, Kaisi and Knight didn't really go up, but given LBW by the umpire. So a good break, breakthrough for the Barbados side. Hector has to go. Lever Islands now 86 for two. So and that brings Amanda Edwards, the captain of the Leeward Islands team, who's also had a pretty good 50 over tournament against this opposition, managed to score her first half century ever in the in the tournament. So Amanda Edwards looking to push on from where Renise from what Renise Boyce and Shanisha Hector and the opener as well to some extent has done for the Leeward Island so far. And I remember interviewing Amanda Edwards before the start of that game. And she was very pleased with what her team was doing so far in the tournament. But she said she wanted to be able to make a contribution. This one is banged in and oh, that is magnificently played. What power from Amanda Edwards to get that up and over that fielder in the mid-off circle. And she's muscled that one over the fielder at mid-off. And it's a very good shot and even more impressive because it's the first delivery she's faced today so far, Edwards. Yes, and she should be looking to put up a great performance because Amanda Edwards, she's won all of her tosses so far <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in this um, um, CWI tournament, but just yet to get that elusive W under her belt for the Leeward Islands. It's better delivery, cramping off her room, not allowing her to free her arm from Connell. Yeah, initial delivery from Connell to Edwards was short and it was way too wide. And they also didn't have the pace to rush Edwards. Backs away this time. Played a bit officially, but away from that field at point. The New York Islands were 42 for one at the end of the power play. They got to 86 for one by the end of the time for over. So between six and ten, seven and ten, they were able to strike at 11 runs and over. Primarily because of boys. She took a liking to Erin Dean and Shanika Bruce in particular. Nicely done from boys. I thought really good cricket from boys. I mean, she the way she's been batting, you expect her to go at the bowlers, but she's decided she's reading the play. Connell is on to pick up wickets. She already picked up one, and she's decided, you know what, I'm just going to run it down and take a single and feed on the other bowler. So that's good cricket awareness there from boys. Walk to the on side. And Shamilia Connell, as I mentioned, was the most successful bowler for Barbados at the end of the over 93 for two. The most successful bowler for Barbados in last year's tournament, picking up six wickets. So they'll definitely need to keep her out of that wicket taking tally. So far, she's picked up one in three overs. So she has one more over to go. That over, it'll be interesting to see when the captain decides to use her. Change of bowling, Kelia Elliott is about to have a go. So I wanted to ask you, I saw you did a cap presentation for young Erin Dean. Down there, I wanted to ask you about her and her skills back home in Barbados. Yeah, she's improved tremendously in a quick space of time, Erin Dean. She only started playing cricket perhaps last year, a year and a half ago. And... 
we've all been impressed at the rate at which she's been able to improve. And we've played a number of games, the Barbados side, has played a number of games against the men back home, as there's no local women's competition in Barbados right now. And she's taken a few five wicket hauls against the men. She's been also been able to step up Wait, in the 50 over competition. Sorry. Nijani Kamabach into the attack and there's a load of peel and she's given so she gets a wicket with her first delivery come about and amanda Edwards has to go yes a late change there by the captain i saw kilia elliott taking her run up and Nijani come about uh stroke of genius there from the skipper change of bowler right away picks up that key wicket of amanda edwards so the skipper has to go straight a line there i'm getting our lbw umpire vicky So the new batter is um, Divya Saxena. She was the leading run scorer for Leeward Islands last year. She picked up 109 runs and a best of 37. She was a fourth in terms of runs, um, runs tally on the run sheet in last year's yeah. T20 Blaze. But much like the 50 overs, I expect to see a lot more improvement in terms of the run scoring. When I was telling Carlisle on air, yep, um, yeah. the runs has the runs has uh, have improved a lot, scoring close to 2,000 runs more compared to last year's tournament in this year 50 overs tournament. So a huge improvement there from the players. I almost think that the introduction of the bonus point system had a lot to do with that. That's uh, too full and played well, but straight to that fielder there. So off the mark right away, Divya Saxena. Yes, indeed so. Kyle raised the same point. What about the prize money? <laughs> First time ever in this tournament, prize money being introduced. 20,000 US for the winner. Jamaica already got that in the bank. And 10,000 US for this competition. Too short. It's played into the helmet there. Some extra bunks. Hope she's okay, Renee's boys. We'll do a mandatory concussion test. Yeah, boys just seem to have top edged that one into her helmet. So concussion protocols will follow. That yeah, was a short delivery. Thought it was going to be played on the banks over there on the mid wicket area. Unfortunately, it was top edge into her helmet. Unfortunately for Leewards. Unfortunately for <laughs> Fortunately Leewards for Barbados. and boys. <laughs> uh, so let's do a mandatory check. Check up the helmet as well. You ever did a concussion test before, Salman? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was ruled out with a concussion oh, wow. in 2017 World Cup in England. The first game of that tournament against Australia. Yeah. Thanks to Long Hawk from Haley Matthews. And I was feeling that short leg. Oh, wow. I always wonder what the questions are like. <laughs> they ask you how old are you? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> ask you to do balance tests. It took me a few months to recover from that as well. Yeah, so the boys looks good to go here. And as you said, unfortunately for the Barbados team, the <laughs> boys looks good to go. Up and ready to go. Probably just disappointed that she missed out on that delivery. So 94 for 3 in the 12 to over. And if you could just go back to that delivery, I think she was beaten for pace. Now, Johnny Kamabach is supposed to be an all spinner, but she does say no some quite quickly. So Renee's voice was a bit, a bit late on the shot. Uh, oh, that one is put down in the cover area by Trisha and Holder. Disappointing for the Barbies team after that delay, almost picking up Renee's voice. Yeah, boys perhaps losing focus after being struck on the helmet. And that should have been easily held by Trishan Holder at cover. But it's another chance to boys. It's riding her luck here, boys, and inside edge that time, trickling down to the fine leg, short fine leg fielder. There's been a recurring team across the 
tournament so far. We've seen a number of drop catches from lots of teams. This time she latches on to it. A play to that field that square leg. Chanel. Shamilia Connell. The end of the 12th over. Leroy Islands, 95 for three. So Kelia Ellert is going to be introduced at the other end. So I guess it was just a case of getting her ends correct for Elliot. Um, the wind is blowing from west to east, I think. Yes, west to east of your screen. So the for to have her leg spinner operating from that end where it's most likely to hold up if the batter looks to go across her. So I think really good tactics there from the Barbie, the skipper. It's a good start there from Elliot. And she don't allow the batter to feel their, their arms, especially in a T20 match. It's always a good start, especially to boys who's been punishing to anything short. Nicely done. Right, Looking to give up. herself room, boys, on that occasion. Yeah, we're following her. Use of the Thank feet you. for the first time Thank from boys up. today. I played straight away. back to Elliot. <laughs> yeah, a good bit Thank of fielding of her own bowling by Keila Elliot. And you can see her tactics, boys. She's not trying to let any bowler settle here. Looking to go at Elliot. Quick single taken. Oh, had it hit, it would have been close. Good bit of feel in there from Alia Alin. Renice Boyce caught unaware there. Looking to run it down, get a quick single. But had she hit that, it would have been curtains for Boyce. Shard pulling yeah, too. Yeah, so it's a good start here from Kilia Elliot. And she's a very important bowler in this Barbados setup. One of the more experienced players as well. Oh, this one is hit high, but in the gap. <laughs> so a really good start there from Elliot. There's two runs coming off that over. 97 for three, 13 overs bowled. Saxena is on strike, and the Cumberbatch continues. She has picked up one for two. Leewood's a 97 for the loss of three wickets. Rennie's Boyce has been the standout. She's on 56 from 43. We're in over number 14. Saxena is driving, taking on the field at mid on. And they'll get a single. School moves on to 98 for three. Combo batches in a second over, having picked up one for three. And the boys is driving firmly all along the ground. There is protection at long off. And so that would just be a single. Good rotation of the strike. Lee Woods on 99. And Saxena is playing all across the line of this delivery. 
and being bold. And he's one of those characters, Shakira, who puzzles me a lot, does Divya Saxena. She does not take a guard. I've been asking her, how do you know where your stumps are? And her trigger seems to be different on every single occasion. And she was coming across the stumps and looking to swing it into the onside, delivery which might well have been played straight up on the offside and lost a stump, and so she has gone back to the pavilion. Just giving me some information, because I hadn't even noticed that she doesn't take guard. I've never seen it before. First time I saw it, I was very puzzled, and I went to her immediately, and I asked her, how do you know where your stumps are if you don't take a guard? So I'm curious, what was her response? Well, she knows where the stumps are, say, ah, but to know you must mark a guard. <laughs> because you go completely across your off stump, and the delivery is even further outside the off stump, and you still hang your bat. So it suggests to me that you have no idea where your stumps are. She has gone cheaply. Just Zara Claxton, who wants to decrease with her to the side on 99 for 4. And the Cumberbatch has made a very big impact on the game so far. She's picked up two for four. She's in the second over. End of the over, 14 gone. And the Leewards, a 99 for the loss of four. Now the six overs left in this inning. And the New Woods would be extremely happy if they can take this perhaps to 150. But if that were to happen, I get the distinct impression that Rennie's boys will have to have a big say in that. She's 57 from 44. Runs have dried up for the Leeward Island side since the dismissal of Shanisha Hector. They were 86 at the point that she was dismissed. That was only into the 11th over. They're only now 99 for 4 at the end of 14. This should be a single, which will take the side up to 100. So the 100 comes up after 14.1 overs. Renice Boyce, the main stay on 58. Jazara Claxton is on strike. So the 100 coming up for the Leewards. Elliot is bowling from the Lozak Road end and she's getting one which is spinning across her and just leaves it for the keeper to take. Claxton was caught napping in the last game. Left the delivery, was out of a crease and while rehearsing the shot, she was out stumped. This one is even wider, called and signaled by the umpire. And so it's 101 for four, the Leewards. And is driving and uh, it's misfielded by the fielder at short third and they'll get a single. She goes off the mark Claxton. She's on one and the score is 102 for four. Boyce is advancing. Tugs this one into the onside to mid wicket, won't score. So she's on 58 from 46. And it's Elliot from the Lozak Road end. She's advancing again, hits this one straight, high, hard, and far. Brings up another beautiful six. And yeah, that's excellent batting by Renice Boy. It's not afraid to use her feet. And just look at the way she shimmies to the leg side to give her arms enough room. To hit through the line of the ball. And it's a fourth maximum for boys. She's really taking it to the Barbados side. Capitalizing on all the opportunities given to her so far. Remember there was a chance when she was on 24. And then she was dropped by Trishan Holder a few overs ago at cover. 
Elliot again, and Boyce is driving. It peels from the outer portion of the bat and goes away on the offside. And so at the end of the over, the Leewards, 15 overs completed, 108 for four against Barbados. at Warner Park. Jazeera Claxton is on one. Cumberbatch is bowling to her and she plays it away into the offside and they won't score. So Cumberbatch has picked up two for four. We're in the 16th over. Leewood's 108 for four. Most must really commend like Jani Cumberbatch for the way she's going to bowl her bowling in this game in particular and she's really come to the party for this Barbados side at a crucial time with Bruce being expensive Erin Dean being expensive Casey and Knight really would have been searching for another bowler to slow the scoring and she's done that tremendously she's done that primarily by taking wickets she did struggle with the ball in the 50 over competition but she hasn't shied away from bowling and uh, Boyce is advancing, strokes it firmly over the head of the bowler. Long on is on the boundary, they'll get a single. And Rennie's Boyce moves to 65. It's 110 for four, the Leewards. Harboring thoughts of their first bonus point. Cumberbatch. Balls a delivery which is down the leg side. It's called and signal wide. Claxton was swinging at it, missed it. And so one more to the total. It's 1-1-1 one, one, one for four. In the middle of the 16th over. Cumberbatch, two for seven before this. Balls a short delivery, played in the air, soft dismissal. Picked out the fielder there. At uh, extra cover and very soft dismissal. Jazara Claxton would be disappointed with that. Yeah, she did strike it quite firmly, Jazara Claxton. But unfortunately for her, she wasn't able to get it square enough. Picked out Aliyah Alin waiting at a very straight extra cover. So it's a, it's a third wicket for Nijani Kamabach. She now has three for seven from 2.4 overs. The World Islands continue to slip. 1-1-1 one, one, one for five. Very good comeback by Barbados because they were under the gun a bit. But they maintained their composure, maintained their cool, and the reason for this, and the, the, the slowing down of the run rate really, has been Cumberbatch. Three for seven. She's in a third over. Fantastic bowling by her so far. It'll be Kimberly Anthony who will replace Jazara Claxton. And she will join Renice Boyce, who's who is on 65. And who holds the key to the final total that this Lever Island side will get up to? Anthony? Long off, long on, deep my wicket and deep backward square. Four fielders on the boundary. Three runs and a wicket in the over so far. Cumberbatch is bringing the new batter forward. And Anthony plays it back to the bowler for no runs. Bright sunshine at Warner Park now. Here is a delivery which is pulled down to mid-wicket by Anthony. And uh, she won't get off the mark. End of the over. And uh, 16 overs completed. The Leewards are 1-1-1 one, one, one for 5.
so apart from the 65 from Rennie's boys, the rest of the scorecard really making some sorry reading. Bashkar for 10, Hector for 14, Edward 6, Saxena 3, Claxton 2. Four overs left in the inning. Elliot before this, none for 11 from 2. And she's driving his, his boys, finds a fielder down at long on, skips across to her right, and they'll get a single. She moves to 66 from 50, Rennie's boys. And the Leewards are 112 for 5. Win over number 17. Kelia Elliott from the Lozak Road end. Taking the time to make sure that the field is properly placed. And will bowl to Kimberly Anthony. And for this delivery is short. And uh, bouncing twice as well. And so called and signaled no ball by the umpire. That will be two runs and a free hit because they ran one. And uh, so the score will benefit from that. She, uh, she looked to rush it just a little huh? bit, Shakira. And it's a discussion I had with her on a few occasions, Keila Elliott. Sometimes she just seems to rush her ball in action. And so many times that's how we've seen her ball a few no balls, whether it's been full tosses or double bounce. Free hit coming up and this one is played down to the fielder on the long on boundary and uh, she's running across to her right is Connell and picks up. They'll have a single from the free hit and the score moves to 115 for five. Two legal deliveries in the over so far. Rennie's voice is on 67. Here is Elliot. And Anthony is driving, can only find mid wicket and won't score. Delivery played into the onside, down to backward of square for four. Was drifting in, in her line there, Elliot. And Kimberly Anthony played it nicely. Down backward of screen and picked up a boundary. Yeah, it was way too full. And also way too straight by Keila Elliott. The fielder at backward square is in the circle. And I was actually surprised when I saw Captain Knight ask the fielder at deep square to come into the circle and opting to send back long off for Kim Kimberly Anthony. I think it's a very sh hard shot to play over mid off. She's driving at this delivery, peels off the outer edge, will run close to the boundary, but pull back just inside the boundary, and so they'll have two. And that will take the score to 121 for five. And Anthony goes up to seven. At this stage of the inning, there is no slip. Last delivery of the over. And Elliot is flighting, it's driven down to mid-wicket, they won't score. And so that's nine runs in the over. 17 overs completed, Leewards 121 for five. Cumberbatch will continue. This is a final over. Three for seven before this, and she's bowling to Boyce. Delivery, which is hitting the air. Make this four wickets for Cumberbatch. <laughs> she was advancing, was Boyce, going inside out and finding the field at extra cover. So she has to depart, and this is an excellent spell of bowling by Cumberbatch, picking up her fourth wicket and conceding only seven runs. Leeward slip further. No, 121 for six. And it's a praise wicket of Renice Boyce. So the most important wicket that Nigeria Cumberbatch has gotten so far in this outing, just one away from a five wicket haul. 
The credit must be given to Renice Boyce for the knot that she played. She single-handedly set up the game for this Leeward Island side, getting her first 50 this year. And her first 50 for the Leeward Island side. Remember, she is from Trinidad and Tobago, her first time playing with the side. But credit once again to Nijani Kamabach. And what she did really well there was she adjusted her length. She saw Renice Boyce coming. She just held the length back. Boyce not getting close enough to that one, offering another opportunity, this time held by Erin Dean. Melissa Clark, the new batter. Playing it into the onside off her legs, brings the fielder chasing off the boundary, so they'll just have a single. She goes off the mark, does Clark. Previously opened the batting for the Leewards. So the score is 122 for 6, we in over number 18. Cumberbatch is 4. Bowls now to Anthony, and she is hitting down to mid wicket, they'll have a single. That will take the score to 123 for six. Three deliveries left for Cumberbatch to try to secure Pfeiffer. Clark is winding up and playing this one down to extra cover. They won't score. And it goes down to extra cover. And so one delivery left in what has been a really good spell by Cumberbatch. She's picked up four for nine. And she's back. And the batter can't score from this. So the end of an excellent spell by Cumberbatch. And uh, sent down her four overs, 16 dot balls, and picked up four wickets for nine. The captain and all of Barbados, I dare say, would be extremely happy for this. Yeah, it was very miserly spell by Nijani Kamabach. The one where she showed improved control. Four wickets for Kamabach in that four over spell. She only got three wickets in the entire CG United Women's Super 50 Cup. It's very impressive by her indeed. Showed remarkable resilience, the youngster. Elliot. Bowling a dot delivery to Anthony. Interesting move by Casey and Knight to continue with Elliot. Just two overs remaining. She does have Elliot Allen and Shamilia Connell. The more experienced bowlers. That one flying off the edge. And races down to the third man boundary. Work for Leah Ali once more. Again, she does a good job and keeps it down to two. And now, so you got push, you got up on it, one move, ever in a. Leo, it's a one twenty five for six. Elliot again, and this one is worked into the onside. There's a fielder short backward square, so they won't score. Three deliveries left in a spell, Elliot. And uh, here she's advancing is Anthony and plays it down too long off. They'll have a single. And I tell you what, at this point in the inning, Barbados would be satisfied with a single. It's 126 for six. Yeah, they certainly do. We're hoping not to concede any more boundaries, Barbados side. Sure, they'll be hoping to keep this leeward side under the total of 140, 135 even. Here's Clark driving straight. That's a good shot. Straight back over the head of the bowler and getting four good-looking runs. Safest place to hit the ball, isn't it? A very good shot by... Melissa Clark using her long levers. Just too full on that occasion by Keila Elliott again, yeah. allowing the batters to get close enough to the pitch of the ball and just hit through the lane easily. 130 for six. Oh. And uh, 
Clark is trying to heave this into the onside, misses, and they will get a run. And it's signaled by, and so the score moves on to 131 for six, and the Leewards, they have secured a bonus point. They've already gone past 130, 19 overs gone, one left. And uh, the score was led by Rennie's boys who got to 67. They really seem to enjoy playing these opponents. Each time they've got bonus points, it's been against the Barbados side. Got two bonus points against this Barbados side in the 50 over competition. And no one at the start of the T20 Blaze. Our oh, cameraman showing us um, what's happening in the harbor here at Bass Day. Can't get quite busy in the harbor at times. Final over. And it's Alia Arlene who will not bowl her full spell. She's coming back up for her third over. None for 14 from the two previous overs. Six deliveries left in the Leewards inning. 131 for six. And we're seeing changes in the field. Captain Knight has decided that she'll bring backward square from the boundary into short backward square. And uh, that fielder who was at deep backward square will go to short third. Now the fielder who was placed at backward square has been sent down to the long leg boundary. And so three fielders out on the on side. Long leg, deep mid wicket, and long on. Aline. And uh, she's trying to play it into the on side. This Clark G rolls away to mid wicket. And uh, it's a leg by 132 for the loss of six leewards. The field set suggests that Aline will be looking to bowl full and target the stumps. Three fielders on deep on the leg side, and just the one field on the deep on the off side is long off. That's clear. The region is open though, so she can't get too straight. And uh, this one is tugged away into the on side by Anthony. She won't score. And so four legal deliveries left in the over. Just a run coming from a leg by first delivery. So Bashka made 10, Hector 14, Edward 6, Saxena 3, Claxton 2, Boyce 65. Short delivery played back to the bowler and uh, just short of her. And uh, they'll have a single. Now there's a bit of slack cricket by Barbados. It went past Aline. That's the return and allowed an extra run by the Leewards. And uh, so that's a run really that they shouldn't have had. Yeah, sloppy by Barbados. But good awareness by the two batters in the middle. Alert to the fact that another run was on offer. And every run will be crucial at this stage. 134 no for six with three deliveries remaining. Aline and Anthony's driving. She's bold. Full length delivery. She was driving. No movement of the feet. But good bowling. Targeting the stumps by Aline. And Anthony plays over and around it and loses a wicket. And so that's wicket number seven for Barbados. Yeah, nearly her Yorker on this occasion, Alia Aline. Kimberly Anthony. Just trying to hit that ball through the offside. Unable to get under it as well loses her stumps so it's first wicket for alia aline she now has one for 16 leroy islands 134 for seven brings parker to the crease no, martin correction brings martin to the crease and uh, she had a few in the last game that was played here. She will only have two deliveries left. Aline is one for 16. Lee was a 134 for seven, winning the toss and batting first. And it's Aline with two deliveries left in the inning.
good delivery. And they're chasing through for a leg by direct hit at the bowler's end, and she would have been in trouble. But no, it missed the stumps, and they ran through for an extra run. And so Lee Woods will move to 135 for seven. That time it was Clark who was shouting away and saying, Yes, come. And they got through for a single. Yeah, well done by Melissa Clark. Knowing that every run is going to be crucial. Last delivery. And here is Clark giving that the big wind up. It will run down forward of square for four. And that's the area that Shakira was so concerned about. She said they didn't like the fact that that boundary was unprotected. And of the final delivery of the over, that's where Melissa Clark placed it. And so four more runs to the Leewards. And uh, they have finished their stint at the crease with 139 for seven. At one point, it suggested more, but the Leewards have reached 139 for seven. Rennie's boys getting 67 as the leading batter for the Leewards. And uh, we can tell you that the leading bowler for Barbados, Cumberbatch, who picked up four for nine. So. We look at this and you wonder, Ali Aline, one for 20, not finishing a spell, whether or not the captain missed the, missed the trick in not giving her her four overs. But 139 is the score on the board. And I think Leroy Island's women will be the happier of the two sides, even though Barbados, they were able to just claw it back a bit. Boys and Basker, along with Hector, set up the game and you thought at some point that they were going to meet perhaps 150 this Leeward Island side. I think they'll still be the happier of the two sides. 139 could be very competitive especially with the way that the Barbados side has been batting. They rely very heavily on Kaisia Knight, Kaishana Knight and Aliyah Allen. And if the Leeward side are able to get in to that middle order early enough, they can cause some trouble. And the Leewards picked up a, a bonus point. And uh, points in the competition so far. They picked up two bonus points against Barbados in the 50 over competition. And one bonus point against Barbados in this, the start of the T20 Blaze. So it suggests that they are comfortable against Barbados uh, bowling. But they have done their part, the batters. It will be over to the, to the bowlers when we return. Barbados will need 140 to win and the Leewards will need to restrict them to less than that. This is only the first game today because coming up at 2.30, we'll see Trinidad and Tobago against Guyana. We'll be back with you for the start of the Barbados response.
So welcome back to this first encounter between the Leeward Islands and the Barbados in the Cricket West Indies T20 Blaze. Leeward Islands, they managed to get to 139 in the first innings off the back of 60, off the back of Renee's boys who scored 67 from 52 deliveries. The best bowler for the Barbados team was Nijani Komabach, who picked up four wickets for nine runs. They pulled back things nicely, the Barbados team. The Leeward Islands, they had 86 for one after 10 overs and they only managed to put on 53 runs in the last 10. So the openers for the Barbados team is Kaisi and Knight and Zelia Campbell, who's making her debut. Kaisi and Knight, key wicket for the Barbados team. She has the most runs. She had the most runs in the 50 overs tournament, 272. And also, she had the most runs in this tournament last year as well. So certainly a key wicket for the Leeward Islands to pick up quite early. I'm here with Mr. Carlisle Powell. And Kaisi has been in good form, really good form. Has been uh, getting set and getting runs. But the Leewards will start with Shawnisha Hector. Yeah, so Shawnisha Hector into ball to Kaisi and Knight. Short ball played officially, but off the mark right away Kaisi and Knight. Talking about her form, she, as I mentioned, was the leading run scorer in the T20 Blaze tournament last year. 165 runs with a best of 63. Looking to better that if her team is to defend this tournament. They weren't, they weren't able to do so in the 50 overs. Certainly looking to get some money in the bank Barbados team. But they've <laughs> brought a number of young players with them this year as well and not afraid to uh, put them on the park. Yes, so Campbell making her debut. Opening the batting. It's full, driven nicely, but no power behind that. And straight to that fielder. Just looking to get on the front foot early, Campbell. So good signs from her. Fine leg is up into the circle. The fielder is out at third and uh, cover. A delivery, bit errant in line there, Hector. Off the pads. I always feel like when a player is making their debut, shouldn't allow them to get off the mark so easily. So, if I were the captain, I would bring in that cover feeler just to keep uh, young Campbell on strike for a little bit longer. Well, that's an easy single and awful there. She gets it in that gap. Oh Bowling <laughs> <laughs> delivery, which was full pitch, York length, and there was Campbell standing up straight and having a big drive at this delivery. And it knocked back the middle and leg stump. And so early strike for the Leewards. It's losing her shape there, young Campbell, looking to play a big shot down the ground. And sh the Leeward Islands, they are on the board early, picking up a wicket. Campbell, on her debut, goes back without scoring. And a good early strike for the Leewards, picking up that wicket. One for one, Barbados. And uh, the Leewards, you remind you, made 139 for the loss of seven wickets. Uh, led by Boyce, who was in 65. And at one point, it suggested more, because the Leewards were 99 for the loss of three wickets. And uh, then losing their fourth wicket with that score, 99 and managing 139 but the runs are there Barbados will have to get them Trishan Holder is the is the new batter it's runs on the board you know what they say runs on the board anything can happen and Hector picking up that early wicket putting Barbados on the back foot quite early Oh, nicely bowled there. Nice lines and lengths early from Hector. Well played as well from Young Holder. And 
spray nicely down the ground but can't get a run Bashka cleans up and that's the end of the over and Barbados women they are one for one after one all yeah, the ones <laughs> yeah, Shawnee's uh, Hector started very well uh, just c conceding a single run in the over but the more important figure will be that wicket because it uh, wickets restrict the batting from progressing it brings a new person to the crease and it also sometimes changes the temperament for the batting side and uh, so the leewards would be happy for that while Kaisia Knight is there, Barbados will always feel that they have more than a chance. She has been in form, has batted really well, and is a confident player. Yes, I agree with you. She's one of the key batters in this lineup, along with her twin sister, Kaisia Knight. Also, Alia Aline might be somebody that should chip in and give them some runs as well. So. Those three will be key wickets in this um, chase here for the Leeward Islands. So a change of bowler, Roselle Leibold, right away spin into the attack. So Nijani Kumabach picking up four wickets, really stalled the flow of the Leeward Islands innings at the back end. So Roselle Leibold will be hoping to do much of the same here for her team. With Offord, and just play the way to... Get another single, Kaisia Kai Knight. So one is played high in the air. There's a fielder under it. Taken easily by the fielder at mid on. So another one goes. And the Leeward Islands, they are on a roll here. Two for two. Not great reading if you're a Barbada spectator. And, and not giving herself a chance either. This one was wide. It was back pitched. And she simply could not get over that to play that safely. It wasn't close enough for her to, for her to extend her arms and to hit over the infield. And the only danger there w was between the fielder at mid on and the fielder at mid wicket. And obviously there was calling because Saxena cleared out of the way early and left it to, it looks like, the captain Amanda Edwards, yes. uh, who took a good catch. Yes, great communication there by those two fielders. So the new batter is Nijani Komabach. She did it with the ball for Barbados, so can she do it with the bat for them? She's been asked to do a double role. She has already performed with the bat. Now it's her time with the ball. Now it's her time with the bat. But not a good start by Barbados. Two for two. Let's go, ladies. Let's go, Rosie. Captain will be hoping that someone can stay with her. Form a partnership early on. Did mention she's the key batter. But if you dismiss the other batters, she'll just be standing all alone. Nicely walk there, looking for a quick single. A turn back in the end by Kaisia Knight. It's a really good start here by the Leeward Islands. It's been one of their downfalls actually in the in last year's tournament. Their bowling. Bowling didn't really come to the party. Mm, some of it offered there, just lazy. Shot play there by Nigerian Kamabach. But if you look at the stats last year, the Leeward Islands, they had two batters in the top 10 and no bowlers in the top 20. Correct. So certainly an area that That's they will have to day. work on if they are to, you know, get their first win in this tournament. The bowling, the bowling and they've started quite well here so far, picking up two wickets early. So that's the end of the over, and it reads again, two for two after two. Mm -hmm. One for one, two for two. A run and a wicket in that over. Rosa Leibold being asked to open from the far end with her off spinners and uh, picked up a wicket. 
And uh, so the captain, Kaisi Naichi, has been at the non-striker's end and seen the fall of two wickets. Well, I don't know if this is a tactic by the Leeward Islands, but it's working out so far. Kaisi Naichi gets a single of the first ball, and then a wicket, fa a wicket falls in the over, and it's been like that for the last two overs. She's only faced two deliveries. Oh, nice. Nice movement off the deck there from Shanisha Hector. I haven't seen much of that in the first innings. But she played it well. She dropped her hands and allowed it to go through. She played it well. Indeed. And so this is good to see from Hector. Hasn't really, she didn't really bowl too great in the Super 50. So it's good to see that she's making a, a, a nice comeback in the T20 blaze. Pitched up delivery that time. Oh, slight misfield, but good backing up there by Bashka. Use of the feet, excellently played there by Kaisi and Knight to pick up the first boundary. Perfection into the gap. Nice use of the feet, but getting it in the gap as well to pick up the um, a boundary for the Barbados team. Much needed by them. Kept her head still. She was advancing, kept her head, head still, and played it really well down to the extra cover boundary to pick up four. Too short this time and helped nicely to that vacant fine leg area. So back to back boundaries here now for Kaisi and Ike. Good batting. Very good batting. Just waited in it and they helped it around the corner and picked up another boundary. Consecutive fours. And so this is smart cricket here from Kaisi and Ike. She realized what had happened in the first two overs. So now we see that she's looking to just form the strike a bit more look to press on the impetus as well looks to drive this one down the ground seem to be a change of pace there from Shanisha Hector a little bit naughty from Kaisia too because it was outside the line of the off stump and she was not to the pitch of the delivery but still attempted to go through with the shot One is shot, played in the air, but will fall short of the fielder. Would walk there in the end to stop that from trickling into the boundary. So at the end of the over, Barbados are 11 for two. She played it well because she knew that the fielder was down on the. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Rosa Liber to continue to Kaisia Knight. With Offord and trash to the cover area, and that should be four. I don't think the fielder will be able to cut it off. And another boundary to Kaisia Knight. Make that three. Yes, and uh, she has been in good touch, no question about that. And uh, so. It's just a matter of her staying in. If she is there, Barbados will always have a chance. Yes, we already talked about it. She is indeed the key batter for the Barbados team. And the Leeward Islands, they'll be hoping to pick up this wicket pretty soon. That's what we're saying. Barbados are the defending champions as well in this format. No, no. 
white signal there. It's Barbados and the defending champions. Double champions last year. The one that able to defend their 50 overs title. Certainly they'll be looking to defend that 2020 title. Nice single taken. Nice soft hands there by Knight. Gets a single. Applause there by the ball. I think she is thankful to be bowling to Nijani <laughs> Komabach. Not as set as Kaisia Knight is. So an opportunity to bowl to Nijani Komabach, who's yet to score our four deliveries. Two fielders out for Kamabach is a fielder on the cover boundary and one at the square leg who's not quite utilizing all the so one is played. Oh, that's an excellent Brilliant. grab there Brilliant. by Looks oh, like Edwards. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant catch. And in the Super 50, she perhaps had the catch of, the, of that uh, tournament. And this one was struck. It seemed to us to have been going over her head. And uh, she positioned herself well, jumped at the right moment, and pulled off a magnificent catch. That's Amanda Edwards, the captain. And what a better way to lead than from, from the front. And she has certainly done that in the field. Yes, excellent athleticism there. She timed her jump nicely. It looked to be going all over for all money. You know, it was a good shot. She picked the area to hit it well, Nijani coming back. Unfortunately, an excellent grab there by the captain, Amanda Edwards. See her on her way without scoring. And this is a key partnership here. These two batters, Kaishona Knight walks to the middle with the Barbados team in some trouble. They're 17 for three. And uh, we <laughs> we're still only in the fourth over, and uh, so it is. It is not the greatest of starts by Barbados, and especially after Kaisi and Knight had picked up those back-to-back -back boundaries and then followed with a boundary in the last over, and uh, so they needed things to settle down a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. Kaisi and Knight has she injured herself? Yes, and and this is not good signs here for the Barbados team. I mean, after losing. A third wicket quickly, and the captain has gone down, and she is indeed a key batter for them. She's showing some fight. The Barbados team will be hoping it's just cramps. And you know what they say, statistically, if you lose three wickets in a power play, it's very hard to come back and mm -hmm. win a game, but this is the key partnership, and we've seen it in the 50 overs against the same opposition. Um, they lost quick wickets, the Barbados team, but they were able to string some partnerships together off the back of Kaishona Knight, Kaisia Knight herself, and as, as well as Aliya Ali. So certainly the Leeward Islands, they won't be resting. Um, they know that they'll have to get rid of one or two of these batters as quickly as possible if they are to pull off their first victory ever in the history of this competition. And um, the batter, one of the batters being given some attention on the field, and I'm trying to s I'm trying to find out why the umpires uh, were insisting that the Leewards players who had gone down to the boundaries and come back on the field, because the fielder is still being treated. They had not left the field. This is cricket. Scoreboard not making very good reading because Campbell has gone for naught, Holder for naught, Cumberbatch for naught. Yes, the, the run rate though is still within grabs. They, they need to be scoring just a touch over seven runs per over. It's 123 from 99 balls. The Leeward Islands, they're up for a fight. I mentioned last year the wickets column, you know, picking up wickets. Um, you know, the Leeward Islands, they didn't do that regularly in the T20 Blaze, but we see already they've picked up three wickets in, in a short space of time as well. And the Rosa Leibold has picked up two of those, two for seven. When Barbados bowled first, Cumberbatch picked up four for nine. There we go, ladies. Mm. 
nice the play there by Kaisha on the night to get off the mark. Soft hands by her. Picks up two. So this is the experience. This is the, an, an experienced pair here for the Barbados team. Both of them have retired this year from West Indies duties. Now looking to push things on for their home country. So to me a lot of experience between these two. And this is the game right here. This is the game right here, Carlisle. And again, soft hands. Great cricket awareness there from Kaishona Knight. This time, though, Anthony had been moved from backward point and placed at extra cover. And the more agile Jazara Claxton had been brought down to the backward point. Some width off of there, but pushed into the cover. Kimberly Anthony getting her body behind the that ball and that brings the end of another over not a successful over for the leeward islands and it's 20 for three after four and uh, the knight sisters batting together they will want to have a good partnership the asking rate is within reach it's at seven and a half and over another 120 runs needed in 96 balls we'll keep our eyes on the cap yes and there's a change of bowling Shanisha Hector, who had a good spell, picked up a cue that we get the got that first wicket of um, Campbell. Kimberly Anthony is being introduced from the commentary end. The commentary booth end, sorry. They're persisting with those two feelers out, same two feelers, one at cover and one at Mid-wicket, very square mid-wicket. This one is pitched up and driven, not to the pitch of that one, on that occasion, Kaishona. Over pitching, a misfield from Bashka, so he scramble for a, a run. Bad miss. There should have been another dot delivery. Seemed to have had it covered, and it just went through her hands and bounced off her body. Use of the feet, excellent delivery there by young Kimberly Anthony. It's in the black hole there, you saw her coming. So, Leeward Islands is certainly up for a fight here against the Barbados team. This one is whipped off the pads nicely. What time in there from Kaisi and Knight, and that will be another boundary for her. Very well played. And you see, this is where the fielding comes into play because that single in the last over, Kaishona was on strike. You gave a single, allowed Kaisie, who is the informed batter, to get back on strike and the boundary resulted. Full delivery. Can't get, get her line length right down. Um, Kimberly Anthony. It's been good with the new ball. I've seen a bit of her, and especially in last year's tournament, and she's pretty handy with the new ball. So hasn't yet found her length here and line. So better delivery there to Kaisia. To run off the over, and the score is 25 for three after five overs. And uh, this is the start of the T20 Blaze for the ladies. There's a, another game coming up at 2.30, Trinidad and Tobago against Guyana. And then at 7 o'clock, Jamaica will play the Windwards women. But a lot of cricket in the region. 
The under 15s will start in Antigua uh, later this month. And uh, of course, we're also playing senior four day competition for the males. And in June, the big one, the World Cup, T20 World Cup in the West Indies. Yes, it's a World Cup year. We had um, the under 19 World Cup, the women, they have. A T20 World Cup in September, but coming up in June, it's the big one. The men's T20 World Cup. Looking forward to that one. Unfortunately, we don't have any games in St. Kitts, but I can tell you for sure, I'm looking forward to those competitions that they have there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Absolutely. So games being hosted in the West Indies and in the United States of America. I was, I was looking at a, a, a news interview and I heard that the tickets were sold out in America. I was, I was shocked to hear that, actually. I mean, I know the game is growing, but it's so early that the tickets have been sold out in America already. I still need some confirmation on that one. I was planning, mm -hmm. to, planning to fly over. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so Jazara Claxton into the attack. It's a bit short. Can't get it away, but another misfield there from boys this time. And they get another single. And, and this is the thing with Leewards. They have to be careful here. They're on top of the game. Another wicket here. And they'll feel like you know, they're on their way to pulling off their first victory. But it, it's something that I've noticed about them. They haven't been able to play that complete game. You know, sometimes they... I'll continue after this delivery. So a dot delivery there. Yeah, so, so they, they get it right with the bat sometimes. Sometimes they get it right with the ball. But they, they, they let themselves down somewhere. So they have to hope that they just manage to play that complete game and pull off a victory here today. And perhaps lack of experience, lack of communication and that delivery though, which uh, resulted in the single. This one is nicely driven. Quite pleasing when she drives Kaisia Knight. Mm -hmm. It's just for a single. Claxton, 18. And uh, she always runs in hard and gives a big effort. After this competition, she will be off to Grenada um, to take part in, in the Carifta Games. Oh, she's an athletic one, Jazara yep. Claxton. Quite a fine for the St. Kitts and Nevis. Where exactly is she from? Is she from St. Kitts. Kitts or Nevis? St. Right. Kitts. No, nice that, shot. That is aesthetically pleasing as it comes. Just used the pace and played it nicely to get another boundary Kaisi and I Kaishona night on that occasion I beg your pardon held the form well and over it didn't try to play it uh, with tremendous power just placed it ni nicely beautiful shot 31 for 3 in the 6th over that's the third time that has happened there that inside edge there from both batters actually looking to probably go across that one and that's the end of the over and 32 for three after six So back live, end of the power play there, 32 for three. A great start for the Leeward Islands. But I think anybody that's watching the game and has been following the game will know that this is a key partnership. It's a huge appeal. Looks to be going down leg, probably pitching outside as well. going down leg. It's a good decision there by the umpire. It's a 
better start by Anthony. She was a bit too full in that first over. Certainly looks like she's found her, her length now. Interesting, they have a very heavily set offside field for these two batters. The three fielders out on the offside. Third man, one at extra cover. Long off on that lone fielder on the mid wicket boundary. And this is why the Knight Sisters they play really well to the offside. And Kimberly Anthony, she's bowling really well to her field also not allowing them to play anything to that on side so good tactics here by the leeward islands full delivery but oh it's called a no ball Just, just checking to see if it was for front foot or height. Yes, but no ball, so a free hit to Kaisia Knight. Doesn't capitalize on it. It's a good ball in here by Kimberly Anthony. Good feeling by Claxton. Moving quickly and restricting the score into one. That's one more delivery remaining in this over. It's important that she closes the over out well. She's bold to her plan, the plan so far, the way the field has been set. Now that field, a uh, third man is up in the circle. One is driven down the ground. Um, so Good over there from Kimberly Anthony. The score is now 39 for 3 after 7. And uh, these two are rebuilding nicely. The third wicket went down with the score on 17. And so they have already added some 22 runs between them. And they will need quite a bit more. Uh, requiring 101 in 78 balls now, Barbados. So Claxton to continue, just getting her field right. Cause on a night on strike. Again, we see a little bit of um, Kaishona Knight just pulling this ball into the onside and yes. doesn't score. She has done that repeatedly. Yes, we've seen that four times. Maybe just a case of closing the bat phase too early. Uh, maybe trying to go at it too hard. That area is open past that field uh, at extra cover. There you go again. This time almost chopping on. So I think she's, she's reaching for it a little bit. She needs to allow the ball to come onto the bat rather than reaching with her hand so far in front of her body. It's good observation there, Carlisle. Oh, this one is pumped down the ground, but doesn't have the power to get to the fielder. Luckily for Kaisi and Knight, she's look checking the bottom of her bat, so perhaps it came off of the bottom of the bat, then middle it.
one is certainly be called a wild this time I mean, what I'm seeing so far from the Leeward Islands is it appears as if they have a plan to these two battles and they're sticking to their plans and it's working quite well so far. The scoring has dried up a bit with the introduction of these two bowlers. It's nicely driven. So the last two overs so far, no boundaries have been scored. So keeping the run rate in check as well, the Leeward Islands. So rate, is, rate is now at 7.86 but yes. that wouldn't be a big concern for Barbados just yet yeah certainly not most important thing is rebuilding after losing those three quick wickets mm. it's too high and it's been called a no ball so another free hit another opportunity for Kaisia Knight to score a boundary One is hit. catch taken. It's been put down, but it's a free hit. <laughs> it's a free hit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so she would not have been out. The only way you can get out of a free hit is if you are run out. But certainly, if it was a chance, in Leeward Islands will be hoping that the fielder can hold on to mm -hmm. it next time. Well, Amanda <laughs> has already taken two catches, and one of them a stunner. I think she was more focusing on attempting the run out. Indeed. Mm. Attempted a slow ball there. She bowled a slow ball, but a I'd, wide I'd, signal. I'd love to see that again. I'd Pasad. love to see that again. <laughs> <laughs> but good thinking from young Jazara Claxton. Okay. Mixing up yeah. her pace. Two wides and a no ball in the over so far. Six runs in the over. Nicely guided there by Knight. They come back for two. It's a good run in there. The field under third man Bonry was a bit slow to come around. So that ends the over. And it runs off that over. So 47 for three, Barbados. A recovery here, effort by Kaisia Knight and Kaisha Knight after losing three quick wickets. 30 runs partnership so far. Short delivery helped to that fine leg region. A boy should cut it off and they'll come back for two. So welcome back, Shakira. Thank you, Stacey. Barbara is swimming for the nine for three now. The start of the nine over. Amanda Edwards into the attack for the first time. Yes, Amanda Edwards was the best bowler for the Leeward Islands in this tournament last year. Just managing to get four wickets. They've started well with the ball so far. And their best ball is now being introduced into the attack. She'll be hoping to keep the pace. Well, she isn't a big turn off the ball, Amanda Edwards, but she does offer control to this ball in attack. And personally, I found that she perhaps underbowled herself in the 50 over competition. It's 
quick single, oh, an appeal, and that's out. Some good running in the end, but Jazara Claxton, she's quite swift there at that point area. It's a good bit of feeling from her, but nicely done by these two to get that single. Yeah, because Shana Knight seemed to be well home, but they will have to be careful whenever they hit the ball to Jazara Claxton. She is obviously the best fielder for this Leeward Island side. Very athletic, very energetic in the field. Remember that 50 over competition. She was the one who almost ran out Kaisha on the night. I'm smiling when I say that because. This one is too short. I think she'll pick up a boundary here. Oh, good fielding there by that field at the mid wicket fence. Keeping it to one as well. So, a really good bit of work there. She's been placed on that boundary for the longest while since the beginning of the match. It has to be one of the, the good boundary feelers for the Leeward Islands team. Tanya Martin, good work there by her. So, the over comes to an end and it's 53 for three after nine overs. Could sense a bit of frustration creeping in with these two. I know they haven't been able to get a boundary away in the last three overs or so. And the scoring rate is creeping up bit by bit. It's almost up to eight now. Yeah, but there's no need to be frustrated. Just 87 more required from 66 legal deliveries. These two are very experienced, and Kaishana Knight in particular would remember the innings she was able to play. Started slowly in that innings in the Super 50 Cup. Then she was able to catch up at the end. If Aliyah Aline also left a bat, they will know that they can catch up. Indeed, so Rini's boys, who's not <laughs> done in the gloves today, she has a ball in hand. So change from the Leeward Islands from that end. So why to start? Very fast arm speed, Rini's boys. I was just about to say that was a medium pace type delivery from boys. Advancing his night, not able to capitalize on that. The ball and boy. Crockstown bowled a good spell. Don't know. I was thinking that she probably could have been used for another over or so before making a change. It looked like she was building up to something in her spell. Yeah, but she sent them a few extras in that last over. Perhaps the reason that Captain Amanda Errors has decided to give her a break. a bit officially but just so one things has been a bit calm so far by, by both teams you know what they say calm before the storm Selman <laughs> 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 can you sense the storm brewing certainly it's, it's shaping up to be a pretty good competition this one is played powerfully but that feeler that's placed nicely there on the mid wicket fence so although they haven't gotten a boundary in the last f three overs or so, and they're still managing to pick up the singles now and then again, and they don't look rushed or in any panic. So 59 for three, and they managed to pick up six runs in that over. So 10 overs completed, and that will also be a drinks break for these two, for these two teams. 59 for 3 after 10 overs and we'll take a short break here as well.
of your bot at the halfway stage. The Barbados Chase, they are in pursuit of 140 for victory. Leeward Islands, they got to 139 for 7, and they're allotted 20 overs. Barbados 59 for 3 after 10. Amanda Edwards to continue. I yeah, must give credit to the way the Leeward Islands have come out here today, putting up a fight. And the captain has done a really excellent job, especially with her, the way she's changed around her bowlers. Not allowing the batters to settle, use of the feet. Can't get a hold of, uh, can't get a hold of that one. Kai Shona. This is out, but pass the keeper for just one. Seem to have come off the pads, led by being signaled by the umpire. Just drifting a bit too straight on that occasion, Edwards. Luckily for her, Kaishana Knight is unable to capitalize. Perhaps should have been two. Bhaskar had to do a bit of work to her right. Bahar's just staying with one. A good quick single once more. Claxton unable to pick up. Yeah, nicely done by these two. Just trying to keep things calm for the Barbados team out there. And Leeward Islands as well. It's a case of who can hold their nerve in this competition. Looks as though it will come down to that by the end of the 20th over. Leeward Islands doing a really good job so far. Oops. That was quick. Yeah, the end of an over. Yeah, the 11th over, 63 for 3 now, the Barbados women. Partnership between Kaisi and Knight and Kaisi and Knight, 46 from 47 deliveries. Barbados require a further 77 runs from 54 legal deliveries. Yes, the run rate has now shot up to more than eight runs for over. It's about eight and a half or so. No boundaries in the last five overs. Interesting. So this is good going by the Leeward Islands. Keeping things in check. Is that a chance or did it come off the pad? I was wondering myself, was that a miss stumping? I think it came off the pad. We're not seeing any reactions from the fielders. Another dot delivery. So a change in intent being shown by Kaishana Knight. She hasn't been able to score from this over as yet. Boys into her second. Swung hard into the leg side, but just one again. So good bowling, a good field placement as well. It's really well set field here for these two batters. The four fielders out, mid wicket, long on, long off, and the cover. Not able to get on top of the bowling, these two batters. Especially in the last five overs. And they've obviously had a discussion after the last over, these two batters. And the intent, the tempo. They've made a real effort to increase the tempo, the rate of scoring. It's been good bowling by Rennie Spoyce. Just two runs and one delivery remaining. Yes, yeah, so it'll be important for her to, to close out this over. And she does so quite well. A dot to finish as well. Just two runs off that over. 12 overs completed. Barbada 65 for three. Re
here at Warner Park. And a reminder that the best chance to get your World Cup tickets is by visiting tickets.t20worldcup.com. Additional tickets will be released across the venues from March 19th for the group stage games and the finals. So a new bowler, Tanya Martin, into the attack. Same mode of operation, a single to start. Or sometimes it's a dot. So the question is, when do the Barbados team decide that it's time to go here, Shakira Selman? It's almost up to tens now. Chance for a catch. Falls well short of Shawnisha Hector coming in from the long arm boundary. So Barbados Barrier is unable to capitalize on a few full tosses that have been sent down. Kaishana Knight, the culprit on this occasion, perhaps trying to hit that one too hard. Yes, and that single brought up a 50 partnership between these two. Use of the feet this Chance time. Chance again. Someone added to the total. Oh, that should be signaled a no ball. And so far, the Barbados team, they haven't been able to capitalize on any no ball ball. Can they capitalize on this one and break the shackles? It's been a quite a frustrating period for these two. I mean, they are scoring around six or so runs per over, but they need to get it close to 10 to win this game. Oh, I can't get it away, Kaishona. They hustled through for a single. Good feeling there by Jazara Claxton. Just one. Yeah, well ball by Tony Martin. Not allowing Kaishona Knight to free her arms. He's keeping it on the pads. They cross for a light boy. Tries to play a scoop. Does she get a hold of it? Oh, and it's been put down. Oh, that is a missed opportunity if ever there was one to pick up an inform Kaisia Knight. Looking to try something. Wasn't able to get all of it. Scoops it up in the air. The result, a drop catch. And it's Renice Boyce who's Renice. put down that chance. Coming around from short fine leg. I say Knight wasn't able to get all of it. There wasn't enough pace on that delivery for her to clear the fielders in the circle. And an, an important opportunity gone to begging. You can see the frustration now by these two batters. They can't get it away. The bowling has been spectacular by these by this Leeward Islands player. And another over without a boundary scored. And it's six. Six runs after that over, the score is 72 for three. You, you would think that this over has to go. This over has to go some, Shakira. If you're in the Bahamidas camp, this is an over that they should be looking to target. Renice Boyce, she has bowled great so far, but they certainly have to target her in this over. And they try, cannot capitalize again. Might be a miss stump in there, is it? It was a tough chance there for the keeper. But really good bowling here from the Leeward Islands. And it's continuing. Goes across the line this time. Ha have they found the boundary? Yes, they have the Barbados team. Finally, they break the shackles of the bat of Kaisho on the night. And as I was saying, this over, they certainly have to get some runs off this over. Yeah, and she's found a way to manipulate the field very well there, Kaisho on the night. She used the crease laterally. She stepped across to the offside to open up. That's lay side field. Pressure on Renice Boyce, and she follows up with a wide. 
Yes, China stay away from that hitting arc from the area that um, Kaishin and I just hit that ball. So just trying to take it wider, too wide on that occasion. That's a much better delivery there from Boyce. Still think there's no need to panic though. The, yes, the required rate is just at nine and a half. But it's still worth stroking the ball around and pushing hard for twos. Then they can put pressure on the Leeward Islands fielders. Oh, this one is in the air. It's a simple catch. And the fielder you don't want under any delivery, the skipper, Amanda Edward. The Sterling Hawk team to calm down. They have this. And the, they see the back of Kaisia Knight after, after a mischance. Put down by Renee's boys. And she now follows up and gets that big wicket of Kaisia Knight. Yeah, that draw opportunity not costing the Leeward Islands side too much. Kaisia Knight goes for 37 from 40 mm. deliveries. So a very slow knock by Kaisia Knight. And it is the prize wicket. Barbados women now 78 for three. It will be Aliyah Aline coming to the crease to John Kaishono tonight. Kaishono on 29 from 33 deliveries. This is the key partnership. Aliyah Aline being the last recognized batter for this Barbados side. These two were the two that took Barbados over the line when they were in a spot of bother against this Leeward Island side in the 50 over competition. And they are certainly in a spot of bother here again once more. Shakira, especially after that wicket of the skipper, Kaisia Knight. So, boys, a woman with the runs, also the woman with the ball in hand, picking up that key wicket, about to bowl to Alia Aline. Quick single, some a bit of miscommunication. No harm done in the end. So the end of a wicket taken over. Just six runs coming off that as well. Barbados are 78 for four after 14 overs. Much So back live, and Tonya Martin has the ball in hand. We're facing, well, Kaishona Knight facing up to Tonya Martin. Some adjustments in the field from the skipper. Nicely driven. The car oh, there's a misfield. They look for two. They should get two. A good running by these two. You mentioned that this is the pair that got them over the line, the Leeward Islands. They'll be hoping that Lightning won't be able to strike twice here at Warner Park, Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll need their fielders to continue to back up the bowlers as well. Very sloppy there by Melissa Clark. You know, labored. It looks like an extra cover. Down the ground with just one. Where are their boundary options? Knight and Alia Alien. That's what they'll be thinking. I still think it's worth hitting the gaps and running hard. Hit the gaps, run hard. You can get tools, even threes. We've seen a number of threes being run here during the 50 over competition. So run rate is now up to 10, over 10 runs and over. And I agree with you, sometimes Nicely work. I think this will be a boundary. No need to run for that. So four runs here to the Barbados team. These two will certainly have to do a lot of work. And I agree with you, Selman. Sometimes when you're playing this T20 format, you get caught up in the boundary hitting. 
when there are twos on offer, a six by two is 12. You pick up 12 runs in and over just by running twos. So if you can hit the gaps and hit that, those feelers on the boundary with soft hands, you certainly be able to pick up two runs easily. But that's a welcome boundary there of the Battle Valley, Alin. Yeah, very easily played by her as well. And the key was staying calm. She was able to just turn that one pass if you that sharp fine and change of field immediately. Some good ball to follow things up there after a boundary by Martin. I think Aliyah Alin threw her head back in disgust there because she felt as though she missed out. It was another opportunity to score and another opportunity perhaps to hit a boundary. The field that long off was just brought into the circle and mid-off, and then it was full and wide. So missed opportunity for Aline. This one is slapped down the ground. It will just be one. And we're seeing some much-needed impetus here from Ali and Aline that's required from the Barbados team. She's looking to score off of every delivery. That's key, isn't it? A number of times when Kaishana Knight and Kaisi Knight were trying to increase that impetus. They just lost their shape on a few occasions. Oh, good feeling there by Lybird. It would have just been one, but you see the effort that these Leeward Islands are putting in. So 15 overs gone, 87 for four, 53 of needed of, of 30 balls. Which way is this one going to go? Well, what would be important is how Amanda Edwards utilizes her bowlers. She has Shanisha Hector, who's only bowled two overs. She has Jazara Claxton, who's bowled two. She herself, three? No, two, two, oh, two overs. She herself has bowled two overs. So she has a number of options and experience options as well. So it will be important to see who she goes to. It looks as though she is going to take the ball herself. So the leadership being shown by Edwards. Yeah, she knows that this is an important point in the game. The last five, we're heading into the last five, and this is where batters look to capitalize and, and score as much as possible. And the Leeward Islands, um, they only managed to score a quick single. Look at Olds. Oh, oh, a missed opportunity there by the skipper. That would have been disastrous for the Barbados team had Alia Alin been run out there. Luckily for the Barbados team, they are still, she's still there. Missed opportunity. How costly will that prove to be? Use of the feet. <laughs> Was that another missed opportunity? Oh, it's hitting to her pads there. But following the batter on that occasion, Amanda Edwards. to go across the line. Yeah, just taking her eyes off that delivery. Kaishan and Knight looking to the deep mid wicket area where she was targeting. So you see a number of times she's tried to play the base shot. It resulted in dot deliveries. That's why I think she can still work it around. This one is help. This should be a boundary. Yes, a much needed boundary by Kaishan and Knight. So, 87 for four. And just to note here, the, the Leeward Islands, they only managed to score 53 runs in their last 10 overs. And the Barbados team, they required 53 in five. So a wide signal. Sorry, sorry. Pressure no on Captain Amanda Edwards. So, f three dot deliveries to start with, and then five. From the fourth, a boundary and a wide. It's a huge appeal and not given by the umpire. Umpire Passad. Yeah, no signal from the umpire. So clearly he felt as though it came off some right. part of Kaishana right. Knight's back. Right. Things are getting really tense here at Warner Parks in Kits. This is the first game of this tournament. It's across the line, played well, but straight to that feeler. Picking the pit, hitting the feelers are the Barbados batters. They need to find a way to get it into the gap. It's the 
end of another over just seven runs coming off it and 94 for four requiring 46 runs Barbados have 24 deliveries Shanisha Hector, who started well with the ball, is now into her third over. Swan is slapped across the line, and not a boundary there for Ali Alin, picking the gap quite well on that occasion. I mean, the way this game is set up, it just requires one big over from either team. At this point in time, you don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah, way too short from Shanisha Hector on that occasion. And it didn't get her enough to trouble Aliyah Allen, and she's able to pull that one way in front of Square through the mid-wicket boundary, in fact, putting pressure on Hector. So four from the first ball. So that deep mid-wicket comes a bit straighter. It's another delivery that she feels she probably missed out on. Just taking her weight back, Aliyah Allen, not looking to get to the pitch of the ball and put it away. So a dot delivery to follow up a boundary. Need to keep, keep scoring here, the Barbados team. Yeah, a number of the Barbados batters just struggle with their timing in particular. It's full. As she picked the gap, no, she hasn't. Excellent fielding there by Bashka on the long on boundary. They come back for two. Yeah, good desperate. Slayed an effort by Shabani Baskar on the long arm boundary, running around to her right. Good awareness also by Kaishana Knight to come back for the second run. Six runs from three deliveries so far. 40 runs required from 21. Has she picked the gap? I think she has. That'll be another boundary. So 10 runs now off the over. And... It's 104 now, 100 coming up in the, the previous delivery. And that's what I've been saying. It just requires one big over. And the Barbados team, they have decided that this is the over that should be a big one. So far, 10 runs off four deliveries. Yeah, and Captain Amanda Edwards has gone to her most experienced bowler, Shawnee Hector. But so far, she hasn't executed to the plan. She's gone full and wide with mid-off in the circle. Good bit of batting by Aliyah Ali and good placement by her as well. Change of feel once more. Long off goes back to the boundary. Deep third comes into the circle. Looks like a dong the ground, but just a single. One more ball remaining in this over. So can she close out the over? It's been an expensive one so far here from Shanisha Hector. One is over the head, just barely over the head of the field, and they scramble back for two. So excellent running again by this Barbados pair, and they now require 33 of the last three overs of this contest. 107 for four. Which way is it going to go, Shakira? 33 from 18. Much needed boundaries in that over from Ali Alin. Two experienced batter, batters in the middle. Yeah, Aline has just come to the crease, but she's 17 from just 11 deliveries. So she's played a very important hand so far. Kaishana Knight still striking at below 140 from 42 deliveries. Rosa labored back into the attack to replace her captain, Amanda Edwards. Deep my wicket, long on, long off, deep cover. 
Oh, use of the feet. Has she been bold? No, it's a miss thumping. Oh, it's a hands in head, head in hand sort of moment there for the Leeward Islands team. A miss thumping opportunity by signal by umpire Passad. Yeah, excellent start by Roselle Leiber. She created the opportunity, and that's the reason she was brought into the attack. She created the opportunity. Remember, the normal wicket keeper Renice Boyce is not done in the gloves today. It's this one is played officially. Feeler runs across, diving effort. Keeps it to two. So Jasara Claxton there on the boundary. Keeping that down to two. It's been an action pack over so far and it's just been two deliveries. Miss Stumping, an excellent feeling effort on the boundary. Oh, there's a loud appeal. There's a huge appeal. She's played across the line. Oh, there's another missed opportunity again by the Leeward Islands. Alia Aline was all at sea there. She basically gave up on that one. And no power back to the fielder, to the bowler's end. Sees Alia Aline surviving. Another opportunity. My goodness. It's <laughs> all happening out here, here at Warner Park. Gives ourselves some room, follows her the bowler. I mean, it's just been three deliveries, and we're up here catching our breath, Shakira. <laughs> Two opportunities going down in this over so far. Both Aliyah Aline being the beneficiary. And what is she thinking here? Certainly thinking she must capitalize on those two missed deliveries for her missed opportunities for her team. Oh, this one is too wide. Wayward delivery. Had she gotten back onto that, it would have been a certain boundary. Unfortunately, wasn't able to. Yeah, both fielders in the circle behind screen on the leg side. So she just needed to get back on that one, Ali Ali. It's a big hit out to that. Oh, the fielder almost run overrun it. With good hand in the end by Tonya Martin, who has seemed to done herself some mischief here. She's down on the ground. We're calling for help. She's done a fairly good job on the boundary so far today. And she's done in some pain here. What's more to come in this over? One more delivery remaining. We've seen it all. We've seen it all but a boundary or a wicket. There's one more delivery. So Tanya Martin is down. Yeah, she seems to be in an excruciating amount of pain, Tanya Martin. Her left shoe is off and she's really rolling. Physio calling for the stretcher. So it does seem to be serious. We do hope that she will be okay. Yes, I know she's down and in some pain, but, but the Leeward Islands should take this as, as an opportunity to gather themselves They've missed a few opportunities in, in the last two overs. And they've been leaking a bit of runs, extras, boundaries as well. So this is an opportunity for them to just get together and calm things down a bit. Yeah, 12 runs required, sorry. 12 runs required by the Barbados team. <laughs>
And we are back live. Unfortunately, Tonya Martin has been stretched off the field. It's not good signs for the Leeward Islands. One more ball to close out this over. It's a wide delivery. It's not a good start after that delay. Can Leeward Islands hold their nerve? And yeah, remember, they've never won a game in this competition. So they really have to hold their nerve. The experienced players will have to lead that. So one is hit high in the air. The fielder getting close to it. But they lands just short of her. So a single to close things out. <laughs> so two of us remaining in Leeward Islands. Sorry, the Barbados team, they require 24 of two, 12 balls. Carlisle, I welcome you back into the commentary box. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, I just thought that the Leewards would have taken the opportunity during that long injury break to replace the keeper and put the more experienced boys in the gloves. You know, I was thinking that after she finished that third over, I wasn't sure. I'm not sure that they're going to use her again. So they should have actually replaced her then. And they haven't done that just yet. So Hector to finish her spell. Whose last over was an expensive over. S expensive and over. And uh, you have Kimberly Anthony with two overs. And she has not come back into the attack. Yes, I think Amanda Edward al also have one more over to bowl. And... Liebord has one more as well, and her over was fairly okay. She created a lot of chances in that over, but none were taken. So Hector to continue. Swinging across the line. Not able to latch on to that one. So four feelers out. One at mid-wicket. Square leg, long on and long off. Tense here at the Warner Park in this tournament. Just a reminder, we have two more games for you after this one. And the way this one has started already, man, we are surely in for a treat here in this T20 base tournament. So one is driven straight to a feeler, so two dot balls in that over. It's 24 Adia. needed in 10 now. Alia Alin and Kaisho and I they certainly have the experience to see their team home. It's a case of Leeward Islands holding their nerve here. They've never won a match ever in the history of their tournament since they have have been playing. Ah! One is hit formally down the ground. And I just recall 
um, having a conversation with the coach of the West Indies team in a meeting. And I remember one of the areas he was talking about is hitting up and over cover. You know, that's an area, especially in this, in the women's game, they're only allowed four fielders out. So most of the times that area is vacant. And you see they had two opportunities to score in that area there for Alia Alin. Show boundaries if she had managed to hit it up and over. So that's certainly a good area to, s to look at to score. But that cover field is back for Kaishona right now. So when it's slapped across boundary. the line, that'll be a boundary. So four runs after just one in three deliveries. So five runs now off the over. Getting a little bit too straight there. There is protection in the offside because there is a cover uh, uh, fielder on the cover boundary and one at long off and getting just a little bit straight and allowing Keshona to hit that one over the infield on the onside down to the mid-wicket boundary for four. 121 for four. Barbados still need 19 from eight. It's two deliveries remaining in this over. For the Leeward Islands, it's important that she closes the it out without another boundary being scored. The Barbados team, they're certainly looking for boundaries off these next two. Swan is played down the ground. Can't get a boundary. We'll just get one. So one more ball remaining in this over. 18 required of seven deliveries. And for the right-handed Arlene, the fielder goes back at deep mid-wicket. So there's a deep mid-wicket, deep backward square, and a long on on the onside. He'll be trying for two here. Good running. Played into the onside. The fielder was all the way on the backward square boundary, and so it allowed two runs. So it has come down to the final over. The Barbados team need to get to 140 to win. They are 124 for four after 19 overs. So 17 required from the last over. Who is going to bowl this? For me, it would have been Kimberly Anthony. Claxton has the ball in hand. It's an interesting choice. But he's playing on the 19. West Indies at the under 19 level for the West Indies team. He's been in West Indies camp. So certainly she should be thinking she should be able to defend 17 runs in this over for her team. And Kaishona Knight, she'll have other ideas. She'll be thinking where are her boundary options? Four fielders back, mid wicket, long on, long off, and extra cover. Claxton to Kaishona Knight. Oh, down the ground, excellent delivery in the black hole. A dot to start here by Jazara Claxton, and the pressure builds for the Barbados team. 17 required of five deliveries. Well, 16. 16, one, one sorry. 139 yes. was the score 16. made by the Leewards. 16 required of five deliveries. Four boundaries will do it for the Barbados team. One is full. It's a no ball. And we've seen that before from Jazara in terms of the no ball and the free hit and so on. And this is coming at the opportune moment for Barbados. They have nothing to lose from this delivery by giving it everything. If they get a maximum of six from this um, ball, which is a free hit, they will take that smiling. 15 required of five. Barbados, they haven't been able to put away any of the free, the, the free hit deliveries for boundaries. Can up, up to now. Can they do it off this delivery? Can Kaishona Knight produce a boundary off this delivery? She no, she can't. Another delivery. Well bowled by Jazara Claxton. You, you cannot ever write off a player, an athlete, with the heart of a champion. And this is what Jazara has shown in the over so far. Barbados still need 15 runs in four balls. Use of the feet. Has she connected well just over the head of Kimberly? 
A fielder runs around the look for two. It's a suicidal single. And Alia Alin has been run out. Oh my goodness. An experienced bat of Ali Alin has been run out. They were always looking for a two, two there. And, and I mean, talk about keeping your nerve there from the fielder throwing the ball in and Jazara Claxton collecting cleanly of the amount of missed opportunities before this. So Alia Alin has to go. And it's the experience of Hector down there on the boundary. And Jazara Claxton collected that as cool and as calm as if she were taking a stroll down in Sandy Point. And so it not only gives a wicket to the leewards, but it turns two into one. Yeah, so Kashona Knight, importantly, is on strike. She has to clear the ropes at some point in time here. That will ease the nerves of the Barbados dressing room. Can she produce some magic? Can she get it over the fence? Claxton has been great so far in this over. Apart from that no ball delivery, she has executed marvelously in this over. Can she continue in that vein? Kashona Knight will be looking for a boundary here. Oh, swing, swing and a miss. miss. Swing and a miss. 15 required of three. This is intense scenes here at the Warner Park. In this forced encounter between the Barbados and the Leeward Islands. The Leeward Islands, if you have forgotten, actually give Barbados team quite a fight in a 50 over tournament. Can they get it over the line here? Oh, this one is hit in the air. There's a fielder coming around. And she's not trying to catch it. She just takes one new batter on strike. And uh, what a time for scorers to, <laughs> to leave us. But I think there are two deliveries left in the game. Two deliveries remaining. Two deliveries remaining in this game. And what, about 14 runs? Yes, about the Leeward Islands team. They're already celebrating. Well, they had better not. <laughs> oh, it's a dot delivery. Well, Jazera, you cannot bowl. Is that the game? That, that's yes, the game. Yes, that's the game. Oh, my goodness. The Leeward Islands, for the first time ever in history, have pulled off a victory against the defending champions. I mean, it's, it, it uh, certainly was a mismatch on paper. Last year, the Leeward Islands, they placed last in this competition. This year, they have defeated the defending champions. But you look back at the 50-over competition and, and you recognize that the Leeward scored their highest number of runs ever, making 255 runs against Barbados, picked up two batting uh, bonus points, and came here today, they would have been thinking to themselves, listen, we should have won against Barbados in the 50-over competition. Let's rectify things in the, in the T20 blaze. And uh, really and truly, they should have had in excess of 139 runs. But they would take that and take the win. It's a ma magnificent win for the Leewards. Yes, and a lot of credit must go to the way Amanda Edwards has have led this team from the front. Um, you know, she didn't pull it off with the bat today, but she certainly did well in the field. That exceptional catch. No one will forget that anytime soon to dismiss um, Nijani Komabat to have the Barbados team reeling at three down for 17. A revival effort by Kaishon and Ke Kaisia Knight wasn't enough for the Barbados team to get over the line. And the Leeward Islands, for the first time ever, have registered a victory in this competition. Congratulations to the Leeward Islands team. Despite the victory by the Leewards, of course we have to highlight the the top score which was made by boys of 67 but you also have to look at the bowling of Cumberbatch who picked up four for nine fantastic bowling by Cumberbatch indeed so indeed she really pulled things back for Barbados and certainly at the halfway mark they certainly would have thought that they're in with a, a chance here because the way the Bar the Leeward Islands were going after 10 overs it looked like they were going to get about 150 or 160 but the Leeward Islands they managed to um, get a bonus point and a victory as well. Mm -hmm. So that's five points to the Leeward, I the Leeward Islands team. Kishona Knight ended with 50 not out. Um, Casey and Knight, she had 37. The batting Good continues point. to revolve around these two. Aline came in with 23. But then the Leewards, the bowling and the fielding, so ma listen, huge improvements in this game. Um, Rosa Leibard, 
came in when it was necessary for her to come in and bowl a tight spell, and she picked up two wickets for 18 runs. But Hector had picked up a wicket in the first over. Russell followed with a wicket in, in her first over. Um, Boise came in and even got a wicket, and in the end, Barbados was short having scored 127 for the loss of five in reply to the Leewards 139 for the loss of, of um, when they batted um, the first time around. And so you look at this afternoon's games, we still have more action here at Warner Park. Trinidad and Tobago will play Guyana at 2.30 and Jamaica will play against the Windwards at 7 o'clock this evening. So until our second game then, when we'll have more commentary for you, we will be back for game two at 2.30.